we are going to actually try and connect your personal calendar to your Go High Level sub account. Because if you are running um, as a staff member under the, a specific sub account, whether that's a new media buyer under our team or if you are a client that is under our Go High Level and you have a sub account of your own, if you want to connect your calendar, whether you're using Google or whatever else you might be using, I'm going to take you through an integration process of how to link it so that if you get calendar appointments through Go High Level, how does it show up inside your calendar so you will be notified when the time is due for the meeting. Let's jump right in. So as you can see behind me here, we are currently in Go High Level. Just move myself over a little bit. All you need to do is either you can go to calendars over here or you can go down to settings. Okay, I'm gonna go down to settings. The first thing I'm gonna look for is calendars under my setting. When, we, when we're in settings, all we need to do is go to Okay, we've got a few calendars here, for example. I'm not gonna go into what our calendars are. We use them for, obviously, as you can see, different things, whether that's website transformation, intro calls, demo calls, um, <clears throat> specifically, whatever the service might be, you can create a calendar towards that. What, I've, what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to create a calendar from scratch. So we're gonna go up here. You might not have a single thing standing over here, like I have, um, but let's go through the setup process as if you had nothing there. Create a calendar. I'm not going to take you through every single one of these settings because it's not going to be necessary right now unless you're running big operations like some of our clients. We do other setups for specific clients. Um, for a good example, one of our clients is a corporate gifting and clothing company. So they've got a ton of salespeople under their internal side. So how do we get, make sure that each appointment goes towards the right salesman or gets distributed evenly? And the only way you do that is by using something called round robin. In this instance, I'm going to show you this example of creating a simple calendar, which is just going to be a simple calendar, uh, really nothing to it. It literally says the word simple calendar. So once we do that, we, let's name the calendar. I'm just going to call this demo. You can name this whatever you want to call it. Um, hang on, I'll actually name it because I see we don't have one in here currently. So I'm going to name it our triple three a demo call because what we're going to do is this stuff ends up on a call for us, which means that we have like a Google Meets or a Zoom. Great, you can add a description if you'd like. I'm just gonna set our URL ending to triple three demo dash call. Obviously with it being a URL, you can't have spaces, so it has to be dash. Um, let's make the meeting durations 30 minutes at a time, Monday to Friday, let's do demos. And we're interested in doing demos between certain times. And in this case, 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. in the afternoon on those selected days. Meeting location. If you have different locations, you can put meeting links in here, for example, going to specific places um, and you're allowed, like you see there, it says you're allowed to add Zoom links in here as well for the event. So you can insert whatever you feel like over here. However, I'm not going to show you how to do that right now. There's no need for that. Advanced settings. It will open up the calendar in totality for us so you can see the back end of it all. You can set a color so you know where, the, where this um, meeting schedule came from. Um, I like to keep mine in the color code because it will show up in my Google calendar and will notify me as well before the meeting. However, I have my different apps and CRMs pointing with different colors so I know that which one is pointing from what place it's coming from. Uh, I hope that made sense, but you get the drift. Okay, for example, I'm not gonna put in a calendar logo here. Oh, you know what, let's do it. I'm gonna put in a calendar logo. Let's go find our company logo because it's gonna be very standard typical to our other calendar setups. Uh, okay, wait, that's a terrible one. <laughs> Sorry about that. We get a square based one. Now it will look a bit better. Uh, like I said, the calendar name is gonna be called the demo call. You can put a description in here. I do have a standard description that goes with all our calendars. I will actually just show you an example here quickly. If we just go to one of our other calendars, this is a typical example of a description that I normally put inside there. So if we take this, and we go to our calendar setup, we can paste that in there and that'll be the description you'll see as you see over here. Okay, this is more or less what it will look like once it's done. Let me close that so we can go back to setting up this one. Demo call is what I set it up as, meeting location, you can have a custom address as you know, you can set up your Google Calendar, uh, Google Meets if you have Google Workspace, 
Um, I like to keep our custom ones coming from Goha level in an orange color so I know that meetings that I've scheduled have a different color versus what Goha level has fed my calendar with. Great. So all I do is once that's set up now, I click save. It will take me to the next tab called availability once it's finished saving. There we go. So we are inside availability. Here you can reset or change how your availability looks according to this calendar because wherever you might have placed this link, you don't want people unnecessarily booking your calendar up for no reason. So here you can make the necessary changes. You can have meeting intervals, it can be recurring. You can do um, you know, buffer times between meetings. So if you want 15 minutes between meetings before and after, you can set that over here. If you don't want to change anything, and I'm not going to in this instance, Great, so I'm not changing anything. I'm gonna click save, we go to the next tab, which is forms and payment. Obviously, if you're collecting payments from there, whether you're doing paid consultations, that is definitely something you should look at. However, we're not doing paid consultations, so I'm not gonna really waste my time here at this moment. You can also, under forms, let's look at this. Um, I just spoke about the payment side of things, so you know, if you are in another country versus us in South Africa, you can set up Stripe inside of Goha level, which helps you a lot, and you can collect payments for your consultations on here. However, we cannot. It's un unavailable to our country. Nevertheless, if we look at the form side of things, you can set up a custom form under your um, sites tab in, in the main menu, um, where you can create a custom form for a specific event. I haven't created it now, so let's go and create this form. I'll show you how to do that quickly. Great, so we're in the main dashboard. I just went down to sites. That's very simple. All you need to now do is go to your forms. Once you're in the forms, you can either use one of the previous ones you've made. If you haven't made any, obviously there will be nothing here. So all I'm going to do is because it's a demo call, it was calling upon this type of form. So I'm just gonna duplicate this one for our instance and I'm gonna actually take you in so we can edit something. So don't worry about that. Um, let's do a demo call form three obviously confirm once it's created it it should be able to open so we click on the form it'll open the form for us in an editor great so now we're in the editor this is our typical form might look if you ever put it somewhere this can be a pop-up it could be embedded it could be sent by email it could be a link whatever you want to do with it this is a typical setup name email phone number and maybe the company or organization uh, we've included not a robot to this because for this instance it might make sense however i don't feel like putting in company for this because it, if it's a demo call people we already have their details so i'm going to take that out leave name email phone number and it all being required fields obviously if you click on each one you can see the settings changing on the right hand side for you to quickly just modify it if you need should you wish to add anything you can obviously come to the plus on the top here try and add anything that you want just look at the blocks make sure you have a custom field for it if you need to and then just drag and drop there we go so i'm going to say save and just close this one once it's complete because we are going to have to refresh our page over here so that the calendar can now pick up the new form great so we're back in the calendar i have refreshed it if you look under the form section you'll now see our new form demo call form so if i click that it will use the form that I've designed previously. Click Save. Now it's taken us to what is called notification and additional information. Here you can just add extra things, for example. I normally like to add, and I don't mess around with the rest of this stuff. I go straight to the bottom and I just add in here, triple three demo call, um, just so that people, when they receive the email with the details of the meeting, they understand what it was for and where it came from. Um, not 33, triple three. There we go. Save. Great stuff. So if you are in a current sub account, we are under the businesses sub account 333. We have obviously inside our integrations tab here at the bottom linked all our necessary things like Facebook Marketplace, um, Instagram, Google My Business, TikTok, LinkedIn, whatever else you need to integrate. So once you've done that integration, over here you will have the access to those calendars and their gmail accounts okay so in our instance we're going to click gmail for the 333 because that is the gmail account if you want to you can choose a sync in option i've always used one way but if you want to just go and read up the help document about one way two way and smart 
one way seems to work for us doesn't matter what you want to do um, I think two way will allow you to go on any of your platforms that you've linked if they all read to one another it's going to feed all of them at once regarding what has happened on that time so that that slot can be taken I leave mine at one way because we use these forms and uh, calendar setups in different areas which is not necessary for any other setup type or syncing option Great, so that's basically your calendar setup. No need to change anything here. If you want to add a cover image, you can. Uh, I see it's a new function. We typically stick to a Neo, not the classic. Um, I think this is a new feature from them. And you can change your colors if you'd like. That's it. Then you just click save and it's done. How you get the link, we'll discuss next. So once it is saved, move myself over again. It has saved your stuff, your settings are done and complete. All you need to do now is look at which calendar you're looking for. Okay, let's say we are looking for the intro. Okay, all I need to do is go here on the three dots and click share. I can get a scheduling link or a permanent link. Now, we can obviously go into depth about this stuff, but we normally just copy the permanent link and share it on places like if we have buttons on our website, if we are sending it in emails, etc. Just so that there's always a permanent link that people can click on inevitable of time okay i hope this video helped you understand how to create or connect a calendar in goha level for your sub account and link your google account um, which is very handy like what i've just showed you here great until the next one see you cheers